uh, to see him as he is. Lesson 7. And the subtopic of this one is understanding the manifestation of God's glory now and what it means. And this part we're talking about is spiritual growth and is growing up in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding and the image and full likeness of Jesus Christ. And so basically what this is um, talking about is what Jesus is looking for when he returns and us being ready for him when he returns. And so we talked a little bit about that last week. And I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew 25. And this is the parable that Jesus gives about concerning the ten virgins. Concerning the ten virgins. And there is a part in there about growing up in the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and image, and likeness. And here it does give us a picture about what he will be looking for when he returns. And what I've talked about before in this lesson about uh, knowing when to change for God is about sonship. And we should be moving from discipleship to sonship. And the thing is that most people don't know when to change from discipleship to sonship. And that's what we're supposed to be looking for, paying attention. And it is discerning that manifestation of that change is what we should be watching for. So in the parable, Matthew 25, in the parable of the ten virgins, Jesus gives us an example, a lesson about this uh, change and knowing when to change and what he will be looking for. In verse 1, he says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise. The recording has started. And five were foolish. Okay? So he said there were ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five were wise and five were foolish. Wise mean they had wisdom. They grew up. Foolish mean that they did not. All right. And verse 4 says, But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. All right. So the wise paid, the wise paid attention. And they did something that the foolish didn't. All right, and it says in verse 5, And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. Then all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough oil for us and you. 
but go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready, they that were ready, they that were ready. This word ready is meaning that they were mature, they grew up, they were prepared, they made themselves ready. Okay? And went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. And he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. And this all has to do with spiritual growth. Whenever the Bible tells us that we need to be ready, it is re always referring to spiritual development. So when they when the when the those who did not have enough oil and didn't take oil with them, they were not ready. They were not mature. They had not grown up. Now when we speak about growing up, the Paul teaches this about spiritual growth, and others speak about growing up. When we speak of spiritual growth, we're talking about growing up in the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding, which brings us into the full image of Jesus Christ. When Jesus went into the wilderness, where he fasted and prayed, when he came out, it says he came out in the power of the Spirit. And the power of the Spirit is the wisdom knowledge, and understanding of God. That's the power of God. That's the likeness and that's the image of God. To know what God knows or to know as God knows. That's the power of God. And we need to be able to walk in that power as God walks in that power in heaven and in earth. As I stated last night in last night's teaching Bible class, that we are to operate understanding um, the uh, understanding, having the, the wisdom and understanding of both heaven and earth while we are in the earth realm. And so, and God has given us that ability to uh, to to have that type of understanding. Um, all right, let me keep reading. And um, verse 13, he says, Watch therefore, for you know, you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one. And every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he said, uh, Then he that had received five talents went and traded with the same, and made unto them of the five talents. And likewise, he that received two, he also gained two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and reckoned with them. So he that received the five talents came and bought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. So he multiplied what he was given. 
that's maturing. That's bringing, that's the, uh, increasing what was given. All right. So in order for us to become sons. Now, when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we were in the Adam nature. That's why we were born again. So we have to move from the pro, the pro, the from the Adam nature to the Christ nature. That requires us to change. So the five talents is 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 a type and a shadow of us changing from Adam to the Christ to Christ nature. And that's something we have to do. Get me? So when we sit back and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and, and, and the operation of the Spirit and we just sit there and just wait for God to do so, wait for God to do so, and we don't apply ourselves to prayer, fasting, and intercessory and doing things ourselves and seeking the face of God and going after the heart and the mind of God so that we can change and be obedient to the spirit and go after the heart and mind of God and be obedient to everything so that we can change. That's what the talents and the gifts and things are for, that we be, be obedient so that we can change into the image. The only thing we're doing is bearing it and holding on to it. What? Faith without works is dead. So even if you got it, if you're not being obedient, then it's not being productive and bringing change. And this is why you're never coming into sonship. So even though if you have the Holy Spirit and just speaking in tongues and not doing anything productive to bring yourself into sonship, not changing. It's prospering you nothing. So God's glory, which is the Holy Spirit that's inside of you, is required to bring us into sonship. So it's more than a dance. It's more than just speaking in tongues. It is the Holy Spirit is given unto us to bring us into sonship. And this is why Paul said it is a spirit of adoption. So we have the spirit of adoption, but the process of change into sons must take place in our lives. And for the most part, when we follow the doctrine of men, the only thing that we're doing are following the doctrine of church. The only most part what we're doing is bearing it. Lord, I got your talent, and so I'm just going to bury it and keep it precious and keep it so that it won't be stolen. And I'm just going to hide it until you come. I'm just going to remain myself, and I'm not going to change and just going to keep it hid. I'm going to do everything my leader tells me to do. I'm not going to go contrary, even though I feel like you telling me to do this. If my leader don't agree with me, then I'm just going to bury this and do what, this, do what my leader said rather than what the Spirit is leading me to do. Because I'm not going to be suffering. See, here's the thing about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit goes by what the will and purpose of God is, not by the will of men. The will of men is after the will of men, after their flesh, after their idea. And sometimes the will of men and their ideas is contrary to God because they are trying to build their own kingdom. And we have to know the difference. And that's another lesson. So, so the verse 17. So, but likewise, he that received two, he also gained two. But he that received one, 
went and digged in the earth and he hid, watch, the Lord's money. Notice who it was. It was the Lord's money. It belonged to the Lord. So it was the Lord's talent. And after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with him. So he that had received five talents came and bought another five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest me the five. Behold, I have gained beside these five other talents. And the Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler. Over many things. And then he says. Enter into the jaw. Of the Lord. In other words here. The jaw of the Lord. Means enter into that. Which gives me. The Lord pleasure. Wow. He also that received two talents. Said unto the Lord. Thou deliverest me the two talents. And I have gained two other talents. Besides thee. And he said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Be, be, has been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many. Thou enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Then he which received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not shred, scraped. Scraped. So in other words, he said, Lord, I know you're a hard man and you're going to reap anyway where you haven't sown and you're going to gather where you have not strayed. So in other words, he said, I know you're going to reap and you're going to gather anyway because you're a hard man. You're going to reap where you're not sown. You're going to do this. and you're. So what I did was I just preserved what you got because I know you're going to get it anyway. Because you're God. And look what he, and look what God said in verse twenty five. He says and he said and the man says and I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou had that is thine. And the Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked. And the word wicked here is full of labor, anoints hardship, brain toils. You had a bad nature. That's what he said. You got a bad nature. And then he says slowful. And this word slowful means lazy. Good for nothing servant. Thou knewest that I will reap. You know that I will reap where I have not sown. And you know I will gather where I have not sown. So you know that I'm going to reap anyway where I have not sown. And you know that I'm going to gather where I have not strayed. Thou art therefore have put my money to use. To the exchanger, then at my coming, I should receive mine own with usury. Instead of you considering what I would get anyway, you should have took what was mine and did what was what I told you to do or what was right by me. And not use your own sense. But did what was right by me and not what you thought. Lord have mercy. Sometimes we think things ought to be good for. Because a person already got something. And that's what he was thinking. Because God is going to get something anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preserve it. And the Lord is going to, he's going to be, he's going to be happy because I'm going to keep this and preserve it for him. And look what he said. And the Lord, verse 28, take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him who had 10 talents. And for every one that have shall be given and he shall have abundance. But for him that have not shall be taken away. So everyone that I have given my spirit to. The Holy Spirit to. To use. And to bring increase in their lives. To increase wisdom. Knowledge. Understanding. 
to increase my image and my likeness in them. To use the gifts of the spirit, the, the, the character of the spirit, to develop my image and my likeness in them. And everyone who do not do this, that have my spirit, when I return, I'm going to take my spirit away from them because they did not make usury of that gift and give it to those that did make usury. Help me somebody. Read it again. For unto everyone that have shall be given and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not, shall be taken away, even that which he have. And there's another place that I'm going to go to before. Because what most people think is this. When Jesus returns, he is looking for people, his people who are filled with the Holy Spirit, who have grown up into his image and into his likeness. When, when he returned, he's looking for those who look like him. Not those who are on the way, halfway. He's looking for those who have matured. All right, now watch. For 29, for unto everyone that hath shall be given, and shall, he shall have abundance. But for him that have not shall be taken away even that which you have. And he that have set, and he shall set the sheep. All right, I'm sorry. 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, the unprofitable servant is a person who do not make it, do not come into the image and likeness. Now watch, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth is when you miss something. You run after the phone and you miss, oh man, I missed the phone. Oh man, I missed the bus. That's what you gnash your teeth. When you hurt your teeth because you missed something. Gnashing of teeth. 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon his throne in his glory. 32. And before him shall gather all the nations or races of people, and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the ghosts. And that's what Jesus will do when he returns. He will divide those who have matured into his image and his likeness from those who did not. This is why there are people who, when we see the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have the ability to become sons. And then there are those who will, will become sons and there are those who will not become full sons. And that's what it means about God's glory. Coming into the fullness of God's glory means to be full sons. All right. Image, the fullness of the full. Spiritual growth means to grow up in the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and image and full likeness of Jesus Christ. Now in Matthew chapter 22, verse 4 and 8, we have another parable. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bitten, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatty are killed, and all things are ready, come unto the marriage. But they made light of it and went their ways and one to his farm and another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth or angry 
And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their cities. Then said he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bitten were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as you find, bid them bid to come, bid to the marriage. So the servants went out into the highways and gathered together as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was finished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which was, had not on a wedding garment. He didn't have on a wedding garment. And he said unto them, Friend, how comest thou in thither and not have a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into the outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. We must be ready. We must become full sons. We have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so we have been anointed to become sons of God. We are called to be sons, but there must be the manifestation. Man, the word manifested means something that is seen. There's a, a, a word that this preacher used back in the day. I can't think of his name at this present time. And he used the word the term Jesus walking in shoe leather. To get to this place, it requires full dedication from us and making the relationship between us and Jesus personal. Strong, strong personal. Okay? Matthew 24. Verse 44. He says, Therefore be you also ready. The word ready means that you, there's a state that you have to, that we have to be in. There's a certain place that we have to be in. There's a state that we have to be in. For in such an hour you as you think not the Son of Man cometh. I remember asking my daddy what does it mean be ready? And he would say you got to be saved. Alright? I'm saved. What do I lack yet? You got to live right. Right? So I do everything I can to live right. Okay? All right? So what? I'm, 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 I'm trying to cross every T. I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do that. I'm listening to the church and I'm still wrestling and, and, and doing all these things. But, and I'm struggling real hard. And then as I start praying and, 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 and watching everything and, and, and seeking the Lord and doing this and studying the Bible, trying to make sure that I'm living right. And I get baptized in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit starts teaching me things. And one of the things that he began to show me was the relationship that I need to have with the Holy Spirit. And as I began to fast and begin to pray and develop the relationship with the Holy Spirit and begin to listen to the Holy Spirit and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, then I began to understand as I followed the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit became more and more personal in my life that it took me out of the realm of the world's point of view of church. It separated me from the theology and ideology of the religious church system. 
Because in the eyes of man, if I didn't follow the tradition of church, then I wasn't saved. So when I start obeying what the Spirit of God was telling me, it went against the rules and regulation of the church. And it causes problems between me and the people of the church. And then there were other apostles and pastors who say that was God. But then my pastor says that wasn't God. When others would say that was God. And it brought a confusion with me. And so I had to pull back. And the Lord says, I'm going to confirm with you that that was me. And you have to learn how to trust me. And when he confirmed it, then I had to learn how to become independent. With just me and him. Whether anybody else believes it or not. And once I did that. Then I had to walk in a relationship where I had to trust God. Personally. Whether anybody else agreed or not. And then when I began to study the prophets in the Bible. Then I realized that this is how they walked. And when I began to study the disciples and Paul in the New Testament, then I realized this is how they walked. When we come into a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and with God, it becomes independent between us and God. And this is what brings about persecution. So the scripture says, they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Because the relationship between them and God is personal. So then I begin to look at all these people that's traveling all over the world and, be, and, and going through and everybody likes them and everybody's going on this. And so I start paying attention to them. Why are they so popular? Why are they and don't look like they're going through anything? And the Lord said, Boy, pay attention. Pay close attention. Pay close attention to what they're preaching. Pay close attention to what they're saying. And I start paying close attention. So then I realized that they were compromising the word of God so that they will be accepted and received. Now he said, You must choose. Do you choose to obey the truth or you choose to please man? Make a choice. And I went, wow. So to become a full-blooded son, to be what God wants to be, is a choice. And that's what we have to make. The prophet tells us the road that we walk. And here's the thing. With ministry. If you become a preacher. One of the first things that hit you. Is that you want to be big. You want to go all over the world. You want to travel. You want to you know, make your name great. And all this kind of stuff. But it comes with a price. Because the first thing you have to do is get your name out there and your finances up. Because it's going to cost money to do this. Well, one of the things that happen if you got to be popular is that there's some things you just can't preach and teach. Because some people just don't want that type of message. Well, another thing that draw people, prophesying, signs and wonders, and talking about money. That's the same thing that Jesus talked about that drew the multitudes. 
when he changed and began to talk about eternal life and, and then began to talk about um, uh, becoming his disciples and following him, they turned and walked away. When it become to talk about and making Jesus personal and becoming sons and disciples, eating my flesh and drinking my blood, or else you have no part of me. Some people don't want that. That's personal. Understanding that the manifestation of God's glory now means that we must be changed. When Jesus returned, he is looking for those who have changed into his image, into his likeness. In other words, if you not, then you can't be caught up to meet him. Because it's not going to work. Paul said, I want somebody said in the Bible, I'm not sure whether it's Paul, but it says, you're ever learning and never able to come into the knowledge of the truth. Spiritual growth. And I said this before, that we don't, we have to understand the difference between ministry and spiritual growth. So when you get caught up with ministry, and you think that ministry is what God wants you to do without growing, then you misunderstand it. Ministry is for other people. It draws people to God. But then you have to bring them to a place where you cause them to start growing. Because eventually you're going to start growing and ministry is going to cease in you. So then you have to start causing other people to start growing around you who will continue in ministry and you shift to be a spiritual mother or a spiritual father and start developing other people. That's why Jesus had disciples because he began to teach them like a father. And he began to cause them to do signs and wonders. And they end up having disciples with them. Because they begin to grow up. And we have to, we have to understand how the process works. If the relationship becomes personal, we begin to sort of experience spiritual growth. Pay attention to people who are hungry for what's inside of you. That's your disciple. Feed them. Pour into them. Because they're hungry for God. Alright. Let me give you two more scriptures and I'll be finished. Uh, Luke chapter 12 verse 40. back up to verse 39 and it says and this and this know that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through be you therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when you think not Notice the word. He said, be ye therefore ready. And the ready is referring, be ready, be mature. All right. Whether he come in the second coming or whether death come, be ready. Be grown up. Stop being children. Let me keep reading because there's something else you want to see here. 
Um, 41. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said unto him, Who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his Lord shall make ruler over his house to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all he had. But if that servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and begin to beat the men servants and the maiden, and to eat and drink and be drunken, and the Lord of that servant come in a day when he looketh not for him, and an hour when he's not aware, and will cut him in asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant knew his Lord will and prepare him not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many scribes. But he that knew not and did, not, did commit things worthy of scribes shall be beaten with few scribes. For whom unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. I am come to send fire on the earth. And what if I, if it be, be already kindled? But I have a baptism to baptize with, and how I straighten till it be accomplished. Okay. So the baptism that he's referring, I have a baptism that I will baptize with. And he's referring to the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to straighten. When he, the Spirit of Truth, has come, he will straighten. He will lead and guide us into all truth and straighten us out so that we will know the way. All we have to do is follow him. Right, one more and I'm finished. First Peter 4 and 5. First Peter 4 and And it says, who shall give an account to him that is ready to judge the quick and the dead? Who shall give an account? We all. We all have to give an account to him that shall judge the quick and the dead. The quick means alive. The dead means what it is. The dead. The living. Quick is the living. The dead. For this cause was the gospel preached. Also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to the men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto pray. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sin. That word charity means love. So love shall cover a multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. Use hospitality, charity, without grudging. So don't be grudging, but use love towards one another. And this is how we're supposed to work with each other. And this is what God wants to one another. We want us to grow. And this is how we're supposed to work with towards one another. To see him as he is. We've all been talking about the second coming of Jesus for years. We've been talking about him returning. 
we've been talking about the second coming and when he will turn and why does it going to turn. But the most part is that most of us are not even ready. Don't even know how to be ready. One thing for sure, when he come, whether it's in whether whether we die first or whether he comes in the cloud, whatever state you in, if you die, whatever state you in, that's the way you remain. If he crack the sky, whatever state you in, that's the way you remain. If you are not ready, that determines whether you go to heaven or hell. So if you if you die right now and you're halfway, then you go to hell. If you're a full-blooded son and you die right now, you go to heaven. There is no such thing as a half-made son. You either a whole son, full-blooded, manifested son, or you're not. In the book of Revelation, it says, These are they who have washed their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. And you cannot wash what you don't know that's not clean. And the only way you can wash what's not clean is you have to spend time with him so that he can reveal to you what's not clean. Religion will never reveal to you your sin. Only Jesus can show you your sin. To see him as he is, I have to see him now before he returns. And in order for me to see him now, I have to spend time in his presence. Not church. I have to know how, I have to learn now how to pray and to get into the presence of God so that he can show me now what, what I need to do to set myself free. It's not about a denomination. It's not about a person, a prophet, or evangelist, or apostle. It's about Jesus. And if it's anybody I need to do or get with that can show me, help me, take me to the next place, or next that I need to place, then the Lord will show me. But first, I need to get into the place where I, it needs to be personal so that I can have an ear to hear. And watch this. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And then I'm finished. Cornelius. The Holy Spirit got hold of Cornelius. Cornelius and his house. And all of his servants. Repented before the Lord. And the Lord saved them. But Cornelius did not understand. And he could not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So the Lord spoke to him and told him to send men to Joppa to get Peter. And Peter would tell him what he needed to do. He sent men that got found Peter. Peter came back and taught him the scripture concerning Jesus. And then Cornelius said, what must we do to be saved? And he baptized Cornelius and his whole house and his servants. In the name of Jesus. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And spoke in tongues. But Cornelius heard God. For himself. And then sent for Peter. So get in the place. To hear God for yourself. And then God will speak to you. To send you. Or call you. Call you to find someone. That you need for that next place. Make God personal first. Then God will bring somebody else in your life to disciple you.
All right, everybody. I'm finished.